550. This is the McGraw Show on KTRS. Last month, the U.S. Supreme Court heard the case on Hobby Lobby. They're saying that they are a religious, they are, are owned by a uh, uh, Christian um, family, and they don't feel like they should be forced by the federal government to provide some uh, birth control coverage for their employees that they find objectionable and go against their religious beliefs. The man who uh, argued on behalf of Hobby Lobby is a constitutional law professor at the University of Missouri, and he joins us now. Josh Hawley, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Thanks very much for having me. Great to be with you. My uh, goal in this interview is to ask you more questions than uh, Justice Clarence Thomas. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. <laughs> okay, good. Um, let's... If if you can, in a nutshell, it, it's a it's a great case because it it's it's you have to have the wisdom of Solomon to figure out who has the constitutional right, the employee. Do, do they have a right for their rights not to be infringed on, or does Hobby Lobby and their owners have the rights not to be infringed upon? Well, I think the answer is, is that both parties have rights. Uh, the employees certainly have a, a constitutionally right to a constitutionally protected right to contraception, according to the U.S. Supreme Court from many years ago. And the important thing to realize is that that right is in no way threatened or implicated by this case. The Green family, who own Hobby Lobby and who are, as you say, a devout Christian, do not want to deny contraception to anyone, especially not their employees. In fact. They pay for 16 out of the 20 forms of contraception that are legally available in this country, and they don't want to make any forms unavailable. Their argument is, the Greens just say, as to four of 20, and just four of 20 forms of contraception that actually work by inducing the equivalent of an abortion, as just to those, the Greens say, we just want to be left out of it. Our conscience, our religious, sincerely held religious beliefs, don't permit us to pay for, directly pay for, those four forms of contraception. They're fine if somebody else pays for it. They're fine if their employee uh, get it on their own or get it from other parties or what have you. They're certainly fine if their employees use it. The Greens are just saying as to those four, we can't in good conscience pay for it. So really we have uh, rights here on the part of the Greens, the right to religious liberty, uh, the, along with the employee's right uh, to access to contraception that can be accommodated and sit well together. Um, and that's why I think the court will ultimately side with the Greens in this case. Uh, yesterday, Mother Jones, a liberal organization, wrote an article saying that while Hobby Lobby is, is claiming religious objections on the one side, their nine or ten different uh, 401k plans in, in, invest in pharmaceutical companies that um, administer, develop, and sell some of these same things they are objecting with? Well, I think there's a difference between uh, directly paying for these, these drugs, these abortifacients, abortion-inducing drugs, uh, and you know, third or fourth uh, order connections uh, to these drugs through other means. And so what the thing to know about the Affordable Care Act is that it mandates that employers pay specifically for these particular drugs. It's not as if the Affordable Care Act says, well, you just have to cover contraception in some form, or you have to give your employees a, you know, a voucher they can use for contraception, and then they make the choice. That's not it. The Affordable Care Act actually says, no, you have to pay for specifically these 20 forms, including these four abortion-inducing drugs. So the connection is very direct. You know, the Greens are being asked to pay for, underwrite, facilitate, make available these four abortion-inducing drugs. And it's that, it's that direct connection that's a burden on their religious faith. Uh, the, 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 the great thing about the, these constitutional conversations is that there's always what if, what if, what if. What if a Christian scientist owns a company and says, I do not believe it is my right to actually offer health insurance because I don't believe in medicine. Do they have a right not to offer um, health insurance and get an exemption because of their religious beliefs? Well, under the Affordable Care Act, actually, the employer does have the option not to offer any health insurance. They have to pay a, a set of fines if they don't offer um, the health insurance. Uh, in fact, it's an interesting point to, to know, uh, McGraw, that uh, Hobby Lobby 
would actually be fined less in this case. They're facing $1.3 million in fines every single day because of their religious objection to just these four forms of contraception. That's over $470 million a year in fines. However, if Hobby Lobby simply denied their employees health insurance altogether, they'd only face something between 20 and $30 million in fines a year. I mean, it's really striking, the difference, uh, which is a shame because Hobby Lobby has provided, voluntarily provided health insurance to their employees for years and years, and of course has also provided contraceptive coverage to their, to their employees for years and years. So in this case, the government's actually incentivizing them not to provide any coverage at all which is something they don't want to do. They want to provide the coverage. So that's one point. But as to your broader question about the sort of slippery slope, it's a good point. And I think the answer is that the statute at the center of this case called the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, it sets up a neutral, uniform legal standard that says that any employer or any, any business person who has an objection is going to have to show that the government's interests are actually – more exactly, the government can show that its interest is compelling in making the employer pay for or provide whatever services are at issue. If the government can show that its interests are compelling, then it can make the regulation stick. And so here's the point. In most cases, I suspect, the government is not going to have a problem in showing that its interest in having the employer cover blood transfusions or antibiotics or vaccines is pretty darn compelling. The reason the government can't show that in this case among other things, is that the government has actually exempted scores and scores of businesses from providing contraceptives. It's exempted so many businesses that over half of the nation's workforce isn't even covered by this mandate. And so the government can't show that it has a compelling interest in not exempting folks for religious reasons when it's already exempted so many other folks for so many other reasons. Josh Hawley, our guest, he's a constitutional law professor at the University of Missouri, and this was the argument that he presented to the U.S. Supreme Court last month with the Hobby Lobby case. We got into a conversation yesterday on the radio, and it seems like if Hobby Lobby wins this, it seems like we're headed to a situation where the employee will just as you say, give a voucher or their their monies to the employee, and then we would then go and buy our own health insurance. Do you see that moving in this direction? Well, there's all kinds of things the government could do to accommodate um, religious, sincere religious objectors like the Greens, and also to make sure that contraception, all 20 forms of contraception are, are, are widely available, which they already are, I might add. But here's here's one thing that the government could do. The government could well set up some sort of an accommodation like it's done over on the nonprofit side for certain nonprofit companies who have similar religious objections, and it could have a third party insurer actually pay for the four uh, abortion inducing drugs that are at issue here. Or the government could subsidize and provide those drugs directly through Title X. Uh, the government already spends hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Um, subsidizing contraceptives and making them directly available, and they could do so, it could continue to do so, and could make these four forms of contraception available directly for free if it wanted to through Title X. So there are ample other ways uh, already in place, means already in place that the government could take to make sure that these contraceptives, and again, there's only four out of 20 at issue in this case, to make sure that those are widely available. And I might add, they could do this without making any major changes to the Affordable Care Act. Yep. I mean, th there would be no major change in Obamacare that would be required. And the government simply hasn't even tried to do this, which I'm afraid does not meet their burden um, under federal law. Josh, uh, when are you expecting them to rule on this? Well, you know, the argument came uh, late in the term. I should say that the, the guy actually stood up and argued for us in court is the former Solicitor General of the United States, Paul Clement, who, for my money, is the best oral advocate in the country. So our team was there, and I was there with our team uh, last Tuesday. But that comes, that argument came pretty late in the, in the Supreme Court term. So I would be surprised if we got a decision uh, before June. You know, it's a complicated case. The justices had a lot of questions, and in fact, they actually extended the time for oral argument, which they very rarely do. So it was a particularly long argument. Uh, so I look for an opinion sometime in June. It, with that extra time, did uh, Clarence Thomas ask a question? <laughs> 
Uh, there were many questions, but not from Justice Thomas. <laughs> Fascinating. Josh uh, Holly is a constitutional law professor at the University of Missouri. Josh, thank you very much for your time. Fascinating My conversation. Pleasure. My pleasure. You got it. 731 here on the Big 550 KT.